The first time that I was diagnosed with cancer was actually in 1996. I was 15 years old. Last year I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And once again, I, I, I took it hard because I didn't know if I was gonna have to go through everything that I went through the first time. When I was downsized in my job, I actually did not have insurance. So we're dealing with losing a job, getting diagnosed with cancer, and not having insurance, which having no idea how in the world I'm even gonna be able to take care of myself medically. I left my, my job, my previous job, and decided to open my own daycare. Um, it was then that I found out that no insurance companies would really pick me up because of my pre-existing history. The bills are huge and there's nothing you can do because you need that coverage and you need to take care of yourself because if you don't, you're not going to live. I mean, that's, it's as scary as that. America has a problem. And that means we, the American Cancer Society, have a problem. Millions of Americans, when they need cancer care the most, either don't have access to it, or as unbelievable as it sounds, must choose not to get it. Lives are being lost. The goals we've set, the commitments we've made, we're not going to succeed. We can't unless we can make access to quality cancer care possible for Raina and Kathy and the millions of others facing these difficult circumstances and even more difficult decisions. Of course, the irony is this is an historic time in our fight against cancer. We're seeing cancer incidents and cancer deaths declining for the first time in history. Thanks to new technologies that can detect cancer earlier than ever before, innovative therapies that can target and treat cancer in completely new ways, and voluminous information that can help people do more to prevent cancer. Progress is everywhere, and so is hope that we can save more lives. And yet, for 47 million Americans today who have no health insurance, none whatsoever, getting access to life-saving cancer care can be a virtual impossibility. For them, this is where they come for primary health care. And much too often, they come much too late for cancer to be treated successfully. That's the obvious part of this dilemma. Less obvious is the personal toll this problem is taking on countless middle-income Americans, working people with homes, families, and dreams. These families are facing their own devastating realities. Not having insurance immediately was a problem to me. I mean, I had no idea how expensive breast cancer is to have. After so long, and they, if they didn't receive a payment or whatever, they would turn you into a collection agency. Um, basically, on, on every medical bill that I have, they've turned us into a collection agency. These healthcare costs are so enormous. I can't, you know, like I said, when I get the bills in the mail, an MRI was $5,000, surgeries, treatments are thousands and thousands of dollars. And if you can't afford that, what do you do? Here's just one example. This is the annual price of a brand new and very effective treatment for colon cancer. If health insurance covers as much as 70%, that still leaves $30,000 a steep price for a family making 50, 60, or even $70,000 a year. Some simply can't afford to fight the disease. For those who do fight, most exhaust all their savings. That goes first. Then they find themselves missing a mortgage payment or paying their credit card bills a little late. Some families are able to borrow money from relatives or a bank, but eventually more than 40% find themselves unable to pay for food or heat or housing while keeping up with their medical costs. This isn't right. This isn't health care. And this certainly isn't fulfilling our mission to prevent cancer, save lives, and diminish suffering from cancer. What are we going to do about it? What we've done for nearly a century. We're going to be vocal, organized, and active. We're going to make certain that everyone in America is aware of the problem and concerned about the consequences. 
and knows exactly where to turn for answers and leadership. The American Cancer Society did help me. I did talk to um, some people um, about my situation and everything, and they did give me other organizations um, that I could contact for other different programs. Even though I know I'm going through this awful, terrible time in my life, there is some hope that I can get some help out there, and the American Cancer Society was absolutely wonderful.